Welcome to the Pharmaceutical Technology Podcast, Facilities of the Future, Innovating the Future of Manufacturing. This podcast is brought to you by the International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineering, ISPE. ISPE is the world's largest not-for-profit association serving its members through leading scientific, technical, and regulatory advancement across the entire pharmaceutical life cycle. To find out more, please visit www.ispe.org. And now, here's your host for this podcast, Managing Editor of Special Projects for Pharmaceutical Technology, Kaylin Chiarello Ebner. Hello, everyone. This is Kaylin Chiarello Ebner, Managing Editor of Special Projects for Pharmaceutical Technology. I'm here with James Breen, Jr., Vice President of Lead Biologics Expansion at Johnson & Johnson. Thank you for being here today, Jim. Great to be here, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Let's get started. So we are here to discuss innovating the future of pharmaceutical manufacturing. In the next, say, five to ten years, what changes do owners expect to see in the building and implementation of new facilities? Great question, Caitlin. What I think the owners will be looking for is facilities that address patient needs much quicker, so speed will actually be very, very important. The plants need to be very flexible and agile according to demands that um, we get from our sales forecast. I think the plants will be global and our our supply chains will be globally focused. And most importantly, I think also the changes in technology and the ability to respond to those changes will be key for the new facilities of the future. So what type of legacy issues and CGMP challenges will existing facilities face while trying to adopt these new technologies? I think that a lot has to do with what new technologies will come over the next five to ten years. So our ability to respond to those technology changes in terms of layout, uh, training of staff to making sure the staff is able to handle these new technologies, and also making, again, sure that we can be both agile, flexible, and very quickly respond to patient needs and demands is important. Is there one innovation that you believe every new facility will adopt? I believe all the facilities will look to be extremely agile and flexible to patient demands and also being able to respond to new technologies. So it's hard to pin it down to one innovation, but I think those three would be important. Eli Lilly and Company was just announced as the overall winner of the 2017 Facility of the Year Awards, the ISPE FOIA program. Can you tell us what made that project stand out and how it will be showcased within the conference? Eli Lilly was selected for the 2017 Facility Year Award winner because they were able to demonstrate a program where they put new technology called continuous manufacturing for oral solid dosage tablets in two facilities at the same time. One facility was located in Puerto Rico. The other was located in Indianapolis, Indiana. They were also able to demonstrate how they were able to use teams that were able to be aligned in the use of technology across those two plants, and they recently got an approval for their product. Can you tell us why the Facilities of the Future Conference was developed? ISPE has a program called Facility of the Year, or FOIA, and that program has been focused on many different trends within the pharmaceutical industry. Last year in 2016, we created a new award called Facility of the Future Award, And ISP also has made that part of their strategic priorities, one of the six that ISP is focused on. So we recognize that the importance of being able to respond to new technologies, making sure that we can really respond quickly and agile to patient demand, and also being able to train our staff to handle these new technologies was very important. So as part of the FOIA award, we decided to start a new award called Facility of the Year. And this is the second time that ISPE has chosen to host this event. Can you please give us some highlights from the last event and what we can expect this year? The program that we ran in November 2016 was a global program. We had people from every region of the world participate. In addition, we had people from academia. We had people from the White House. We actually had some speakers from the White House come to talk to us and other government agencies. We had industry, we had vendors. So we're really a very composite, a very diverse group of folks focused on what technologies were coming in the future and how to respond. We also had some startup companies participate 
which also allowed folks to really see what was possible in the future. Jim, can you explain the types of disruptive technologies and the challenges that will be discussed in the sessions? I think that's a great question, Caitlin. You know, we'll be demonstrating many different types of technologies, such as 3D printing, uh, the use of data analytics and uh, multivariate analysis. We'll be demonstrating the use of modular facilities to allow us to bring online facilities quicker with greater flexibility. We'll be having folks talk about disposable manufacturing, and we plan to also have some startup companies attend the sessions. We, again, plan to have this session to show to have both government, academic, industry, and vendors uh, showcased here, and we think it will be a very good uh, conference. And my last question, can you describe what tools attendees will be able to take away from this conference and immediately be able to apply to their jobs? Good question, Caitlin. I think what this conference will do to attendees, it will show them what is going on within the industry so they have the ability to plan and participate in how the industry is changing. I think you'll be able to get new contacts. You'll be able to reestablish old network contracts. And then you'll see what new technologies are coming or may be coming to the industry so that you can determine if you'd like to be, have more information on those technologies or to be able to get additional training. Thank you for that informative overview, Jim. Great, Caitlin, and I really appreciate you taking time out to talk to me about the Factory of the Future at ISPE, and hopefully we'll see you at the conference. Thanks, Jim. My pleasure. We truly appreciate you being here today. This has been Caitlin Chiarello Ebner, the Managing Editor of Special Projects for Pharmaceutical Technology. Thanks to everyone for listening. You've been listening to the Pharmaceutical Technology Podcast, Facilities of the Future, Innovating the Future of Manufacturing. This podcast was brought to you by the International Society for Pharmaceutical Engineering, ISPE. ISPE is the world's largest not-for-profit association, serving its members through leading scientific, technical, and regulatory advancement across the entire pharmaceutical life cycle. To find out more, please visit www.ispe.org.